So I looked at that and I'm like, I'm going to go to the skate park and try that. I'm going to try it. That is insane. And that's what ended up becoming eggplants because you're grabbing the same way as an eggplant. I'm grabbing the opposite hand, opposite. You know what I mean? Invert. Wait, you did switch your hand plant before anyone did an eggplant? Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. What's up, everybody? Welcome yeah. to a an audience edition yeah. of Hawk versus Wolf, featuring Steve Caballero. Yes. <laughs> See, crowd. So we have all of our we have all of our <laughs> raffle winners from the raffle Hi guys. Uh, that benefited the skate park project, and thanks you guys for coming. Yes, from all over in town, Denver, Montana. Dang. Oh, you guys we didn't even pay for travel. North so, County? I mean, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Wow. Sorry. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this is, you see I, the kind of budget we're working with, right? <laughs> we apologize. We couldn't get your travel, but… I brought skateboards to give you guys. It's probably not worth a plane there you go, ticket. You can sell those for a hotel room. Yeah. Costs. <laughs> You're not going to get a very good room. <laughs> but we're here to talk about… To Steve Caballero. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Made you. Finally made it on your guys' show. Yeah. Oh, you're always welcome. If you if we were recording one day and you walked in, you could have just come in and done the show. Just I'll remember that, that. Yeah. next time I'm standing on the platform out there. We well, can't do it now. You've done this. <laughs> Don't come back in a second time. Okay. Unless you have something new to tell. Oh, that's guess, how we got Bucky on the guess show. Guess when we come in one time? Yeah. <laughs> Unless you leave us cliffhanging with a story. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then you're like, and to you be shut continued. It off. Yeah. What's that? Ooh. To be continued. You yeah. could play it like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that would be pretty sick. It's Every very story, I'm going to be like, like to I actually be have a really crazy story, but I think I'll save it for next time. <laughs> that would do it. Okay. Yeah. Don't there do that. There was something Rodney alluded to something is like, oh, Oxnard. I, he, and then everyone's like, we got to hear the Oxnard yeah, story. No, he talked about facing death and then how he's not scared of it. And he's like, don't even stop me on this Oxnard thing. And I go, I, I, I want to know about Oxnard. Like, what do you mean you face death and you don't, and you smile at it and something really bad in Oxnard happened and we didn't get that so story? So, see, what's your Oxnard story? Yeah, did you ever get in a gunfight? <laughs> <laughs> Oxnard. All I know Oxnard is being a skate park there. In the no, 80s. no, I mean, like, what's, you know, the story of your life that's, like, the equivalent of his Oxnard story. Yeah. Shoot, like a near-death experience? I don't know. I'm Looking down the barrel myself. of a gun, there it was. Well, I think I just shared it with you, uh, NASCAR. Right. Oh, yeah. We were doing NASCAR <laughs> on the uh, Secret Skate Park Tour. Yeah. On the Gigantic Skate Park Tour. Yeah. You guys were doing 160. Well, I level. was. I don't know what Ellis was doing. He's behind me. <laughs> all, we know is you guys, all we know is you guys are passing Rick Thorne. That's all we really know. Yeah. It wasn't a huge I think achievement. I lapped Rick Thorne a couple of times. I think, but... I, I, think I jogged past him at one point. <laughs> Poor well, dude. thanks, Steve. Yeah. Um, thank you. Wow. What an honor. Uh, I know I've told you the story before, but… but I remember seeing the photo of you at Winchester with elbow pads on your knees. Yes. And it made me want to do aerials because I was like, that guy's small and he's wearing <laughs> elbow pads on his knees like I do and he can get in the air. I want to do that. Well, I think that people saw that because it was a tracker ad that I shot with Ted Terrebonne. Okay. And that was, a, that was the first time that Rector's actually had a cap put on the pad because normally oh, we had yep. rectors and then we had Norcons that we'd put on. And the funny thing about the whole thing with the pad and, and the plastic thing is that's how I learned how to knee slide. Yep. I mean, I'd never seen anybody do a knee slide ever in my entire life. So I thought like, okay, you put the pad on, you put the cap on. It's like, well, what's a plastic thing for? It's like to slide on your knees. So I learned how to bail and slide on my knees. And that's how I learned how to skate. And then all of a sudden, I, I look in this magazine, Skateboarder Magazine, and I see The Art of Knee Sliding by Brad Bowman. I'm like, oh, it's a thing. Oh, you thought you would, uh, invented it. No, I didn't think I invented anything. I, did, I go, that's just the way you It bail. was just like a desperate move on his part, but he didn't realize that it was a thing everyone did. Yeah, I'm from wow. NorCal. They're from SoCal. The magazine's from SoCal. And then all of a sudden, I'm doing this thing that is a thing. So Don't take this the wrong way, but you're so old 
You, you, <laughs> were, bef- you, before you, were, there before, you were there before knee slides. Me too. <laughs> I'm writing this down. I got photos of me in volleyball pads. You guys are old as You're fuck. You're so old. <laughs> that. That's like, that's worse than itching in your daddy's pants old. That's like, you guys are old. Knee slides. We're as old as knee yeah, slides. Man. Yeah. Yeah. That, cool. that was an important part of skateboarding. It Thanks, was. guys. It yeah. was That was huge because that really changed the way that I approach skating. And it also changed the way that I could like progress, yep. you know, cause I didn't, I wasn't afraid of falling anymore. Right. Cause I just slide on my knees, yeah. you know, like, wee. Yeah. But, <laughs> I, <times>. well, <laughs> but, but there wasn't much padding in those pads, but, but you could, yeah, get a, a knee slide, but it wasn't, it wasn't so much the pads that what I saw is I just saw, I saw you and, and I saw you flying and I was like, I want to do that. That's yeah. all I want to do. And that really was a moment where I said, I'm just going to skate. Because if if that's possible, that's that's all that matters. Yeah. yeah. And at that point, I you know I could do little flyouts on the snake runway, but I'm just saying like that was a big inspiration. And then, and then getting to be on Bones Brigade with you and Mike <clears throat> when I was very impressionable and very intimidated um, was exciting and intimidating. <laughs> How many little people? And he's going to tell the story and whatever. So <laughs> I remember you know footage of you being so small yeah. and being that good, was it? And then when he was on the Bones Brigade, he also was small. You were shorter, but he was also like a baby looking person. No, I have a photo of me and him and McGill and McGill's way up here. Right. We're the same yeah. size. At Kentner Banks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. We're the same but, height. <clears throat> so that's, was there any other people of your age that were that good? Um, well, Hosoi was amateur at the time. He was pretty small. Okay. And, uh, you know, I met him at Marina Del Rose Ray Skate Park. Hair down to his butt. I thought it was a girl at first, yeah. actually. When I showed up, I'm like, oh, my little girl's ripping. <laughs> I'm like, that's a dude. I'm like, oh, well, he's ripping. Yeah. <laughs> and, but he was skating the little brown bowls. Remember the brown yeah. bowls there? And he was skating the brown bowls like he would skate a pool. Inverts, like airs out of it. Like, yeah, it was, was like five feet deep. Yeah. Maybe. It was Not tiny. invert. And I'm like, if this guy could do this stuff up in the keyhole someday, he's going to be really good. Yeah. And I remember we walked up to the keyhole and I remember he put his tail down and, but he was scared to drop in. Oh, wow. And I'm like, oh, he rips the brown bowls, but he don't want to drop in on, in the keyhole. Oh, so he's not there yet. And then the next time I go to, to Marina Del Rey, he's he blasted figured it out. out. He figured it out. Okay. That was the difference. I was small. They were small, but they were going this high. Right. I, I was going this high. Just yeah. And doing, I think doing things with my board instead. Right. But it was, it was, I mean, still to this day, you, you and Christian are the two people that could do 10 foot aerials more consistently than any other human alive. So you're not going as high as them. Nobody did. Like you two had. No, but, but I mean, that was, that was our, our generation, so to speak. It was, yeah. it was us. And then, you know, it was guys like Lester and. Right. Well, that's Gibson a, and stuff like that. And back to <clears throat> knee slide, that's the knee slide is what helped us progress to that next level and to be able to fly out three or four feet and be okay with. Okay, you know, what were falling. you doing before you and you figured out how to knee slide? How'd you fall off? Just ran it out or tuck and roll. What? What are you? It's like it's like you guys were BMX riders for the first era. Like you. But you had pads on though, right? We had the pads, but we didn't have the caps. We didn't have the oh, Norcon caps. Shit. So we just kind of just whatever you whatever you tuck and roll or run it right out. Your, knee, your knees were always chewed up. Yeah. So the sk- at the skate park, you couldn't ride a skate park without knee pads, elbow pads, helmet, or wrist guards. Okay. Like you would not be allowed to roll. Okay. So it was really like managed. Like there was a guy watching you, uh, made sure you had all your pads on. So I grew up, Wearing this, I even had gloves under my wrist guard. Oh, me too. too. Gardening gloves. That's right. Yeah, because <laughs> it was the thing. You look in the magazines, and those guys are wearing gardening gloves. And like, why are you wearing gardening gloves? I got to wear gardening gloves. Yeah, and Did you get concrete. the holes in oh, the yeah. in the fingertips. So oh, yeah. I used to get holes in the fingertips, and then when I grab my board, they would get stuck on the <laughs> bolts, and then I would be stuck grabbing my board on the way down the wall. Yeah. That's really like bad. if you did a tail tap and yeah. you try to come in, you're like yeah, going like in I, with yeah. your hand on your board so it gets stuck. Yeah, exactly. And I did I did backside airs, grab my nose because Eddie Alvera yeah. did. And so I grab my nose, get him stuck on the balls, and just hold onto my nose the whole way down. And that was the weirdest thing about doing backside airs with grabbing your nose because we grabbed it right by the wheel well. So we would get that's why we wore the gloves because the 
between you stick our hand on your yeah. hand. Yeah, between the wheel well and your wheel. And then it would grind here and we'd have marks here. So we wore gloves. When I first saw in the magazine, Eddie Alguerra were doing a back sitter. Why is he grabbing his nose? And his back foot's off. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, doesn't the dude know if he just grabs a wheel, yeah. his back foot will stay off? <laughs> he know any better. Wait, he he's out do- there making up tricks and you're he's like. Back- this is like Vanner of like the front side invert, the Alguero, and I'm like making fun of his backside airs. <laughs> But his back foot's coming off. Is yeah. that a trick? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I thought it was. Almost every time he did it, his back foot was off? He had a sequence in the magazine of a yeah. backside error, which was as high as anything you've ever seen. Okay. But his back foot was starting to come off. Right. And everyone else was like, that's amazing. But Steve was just critical. I was like, that's not amazing. <laughs> <laughs> your front side, okay. in, front side inverts and your algarios are amazing. And I was down. Yeah. I, was, I was right in line with it. I was like, yes, I'm grabbing my nose. My back foot might come off. Awesome. Right, because you nose grabbed better than anybody in the end. I figured out to keep my back foot on. Right, but not a lot of people. <laughs> no. no one yeah, else. Yeah, but did. when he was nose grabbing, the board was flipping and the feet were coming off. So he was doing like air walks and finger flips and burials eventually. and right. Eventually, but I'm saying even his basic back today, he could like suck it in if he was going to hang up. His foot holding his, his nose. foot wasn't coming off. No. no, no. It looked right for you. I'm of a, I'm of an era of I had a board that was wide enough and I was getting the um the the burn yeah and then you're grabbing the wheel well there. change and yeah. I was like there's yeah. no more room to grab it there anymore so start moving it up a little right. bit or get behind it yeah. one of the two I remember having to make that adjustment and yeah. finding it to be frustrating I had to do the no <laughs> as I got older and got fatter and less limber I started grabbing from the wheel well started grabbing more of the nose because it was easier. <laughs> Did like you, on the warp tour, you know why? on the warp around. <laughs> I was like, oh, now I'm grabbing like Tony because I can't actually grab down there anymore. <laughs> that's, a, that's not true. That was my no, big master true. plan. Steve, it was. Was, you felt like you couldn't bend over to touch no. it anymore. When no. did you get fat? I don't remember Dude, you being fat. I was like in 2000. I was like skating one of those triple crowns. Yeah, and I remember going for uh, a stale fish, and I'm like, oh my god, what is going on right there? <laughs> I've never felt that before. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, there's no. something blocking. I can't yeah. even grab the stale fish anymore. It's like really hard to I do. Remember you, I remember you telling me that outright. You're like, yeah. I can't do stale fish anymore. I'm too fat. Yeah. So and, did I was, you, and, I, and I was like, you can. He's like, no, I, I can't. Yeah. I mean, there's a certain amount of pounds where everything becomes way more difficult for sure. Because I'm one of those people that's put on pounds before in my life. And I'm like, man, why is it so hard to skate? And then I'll see a photo of it years later and be like, I know exactly why it was hard for you to skate then, you fat bastard. And those were… I, and now it's different. Like the flexibility thing I can tell for yeah. stale fishes. I had to reteach my leg to, to contort that way. It yeah. didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. And I was like, is that… It's not fat because I'm in shape. And I'm like, it's because you're old. Yep. You can't make your leg bend anymore. Well, I'm still, I'm still doing that. And like, so <clears throat> when we were skating, I mean… Exercising or stretching wasn't wasn't a thing. Yeah, like you just did not do that, and it wasn't part of the routine. But you know, like as you get older, you don't skate as much. And I feel like we have to like stretch every day. Like you know, like even like putting on my socks on. It's hard to put my sock on. Still, yeah. Wow, you skate good for yeah. <laughs> stiff, dude. <laughs> no, I mean, I always, you know, I I, I was procrastinating. And I was like, oh, I better stretch today, you know, because it'll help me out and. I would have thought you were a little bit more serious with that because you of your of your back. No, no, you no. Never, it's never. I mean, I feel like you were just really athletical. I remember you running up the ramp, like when people would fall off, you run back up sometimes because you're in a hurry. And you're a shorter guy, and I remember when you'd run up and be like, "Man, he's like a fucking cat. Like your feet are fast as fuck to get up there oh, like yeah. that." Like you and Christian both had like uh you know a real athleticism to you i'm like man he ran up that ramp like he was fucking <laughs> spider-man like you you had a real athletical body no our ramps back then did not have stairs so if you want to get to the top of the ramp you ran and grabbed the cope and push yourself up out. and that's how we, our upper body stayed so fit was that pushing up all the time and yeah, wow. Running up, grab it. I mean, you remember stairs stairs were luxury oh, sometimes yeah. decks were luxury oh yeah you know, and if someone had a deck that was wider than four feet, it was like, it was like they were super rich. Yeah. Like, how did you, how did you make a platform up here? That's crazy. Yeah. My, in the, my ramp in my backyard was only like, like two feet actually on one side. The platform, and right. The platform yeah. on top and then four feet on the other. 
And I have so have pictures of people sitting on the top of my 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 parents' house, just a whole row of people and us skating the ramp because there's nowhere to stand or sit uh, in the backyard. Yeah. Ellis mate for Hawk versus Wolf Squarespace. Do you want to get a website? Do you want to get a domain name? Do you want to show up on the internet planet and show up looking glorious? Because I feel like if you wanted to do it yourself, as a guy that's done it himself a few times, it's always super jank. And depending on what you're selling or what you're trying to communicate to the public, if you come off jank, you might have just shot yourself in the foot before you even started. So I feel like using these guys is a safer way to get your message across the way you want to. World-class design, uh, analytics. I love analytics. I'm a big analytic guy. A lot of people say that about me. Marketing tools, domains, e-commerce, also something that I'm infatuated with. Right, Katie? Totally. Uh, all this stuff is available and they can do it right. So if you've got an idea and you, and you want to flex, now's the time because... If you head to um, squarespace.com slash hawkwolf for a free trial, everybody, when, when you're ready to launch, use the offer code hawkwolf to save 10% off your first port purchase Wow, of a website or a domain. Squarespace, baby. Hey, everybody. Jason Ellis here for Hawk vs. Wolf, the ultimate podcast, talking about DoorDash here. Are you a busy person? Do you do a lot of things? Do you also enjoy eating food? What about if you go to a hotel and then you realize that you didn't bring your toothbrush or your toothpaste? You can even get stuff like that, not just, uh, you know, a lunch sent in late. DoorDash is excellent. They, they show up on time. They show up with your order, unlike other places that I want to get into. So I'm happy to be a part of DoorDash. And if you want to be a part of it, listen to this deal, y'all. 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more. When you download the DoorDash app, you got to do that and then enter the code WOLF. That's 25% off up to, uh, uh, up to a $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code WOLF, because I'm running it right now. Don't forget, you use that code WOLF for 25% 20, off your first order with DoorDash, subject to change item supply. You had a vert ramp, so that was already like more than... Wait, I built anyone. a vert ramp after the skate park closed. Like the skate park's... They didn't last for more than a year, year and a half. Right. Like, it was so quick. Wait, what? Del Mar and all that? No, but Del Mar. in Northern California. Oh, okay. sorry. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I, had, I have the distinct privilege of saying that I skated Winchester with Steve Caballero. And that's big. And that, Winchester wasn't around very long? No, a year and a half. At oh, least wow. maybe, maybe two. And Campbell was like a mile away. I, so I grew up. So I, the first park that ever showed up in NorCal was Winchester Skate Park, and that was in 1977, 77, 78. And then about a couple months later, Campbell Skate Park got built, and that was a mile away. So we could go back and forth. I, I started at Winchester, but then Campbell had this like great deal where you could pay $30 a month for a mem membership yeah. and skate for like a dollar all day. Because like sessions back in the day- It was like, probably $30 a year. No, it's three dollars. Three dollars a month. month, really? Yeah. No, because what happened? This wasn't for the membership. This was to skate, right? Because remember, like when we first started skating, it was like a dollar seventy-five for two hours. Yep. What? A dollar seventy-five for two hours to skate the park. And my you, my you, dad would give me fifty cents for drinks. Would you go back in there with another two dollars to like stay? Or could you give him ten bucks and stay all day, or how did that? Um, I think he didn't have ten dollars. Yeah, yeah. seventy-eight, dude. No, dude. My mom. <laughs> oh my, God. my mom gave me a dollar yeah. to eat all day. Yeah, a and dollar. but you could only skate for an hour because you were out of money to pay for the next hour. Pretty much, yeah. Man, what a crock of shit! It's no, so bad. So, Ca so Campbell had this this deal where you paid thirty dollars, and I I like think about it, like that's a dollar all day. So I I went to I left Winchester, went to Campbell. I'm like, I'm going to skate every single day. 
because I can skate for a dollar a day. That's crazy that your home park became the reason for your home park was economics. Oh yeah. That's that's wild. Because yeah. everyone else didn't have two parks. It was just one and you just made it work. Yeah. And so for some reason, Campbell had this, they were really fam family oriented. So we had contests every week. I I could win like stuff from the pro shop. I could win free drinks. Um, I could win more skate time. So that that's what gave me my drive to be competitive was, oh, you get, you get stuff right. for doing good. And so I would practice and practice. And then the top of the thing was get on the C, B, or A team. If you got on the A team of Campbell Skate Park, you got to skate for free. Wow. So that means, okay, if I make it onto the A team, my parents don't have to pay $30 a month to pay for my skating. Yeah. So I worked my butt off every day. I'd go there. There was nobody at the park. And I would skate and skate and skate. So that Campbell taught me how to be competitive and how to win things. Well, Winchester was just Winchester. They had the Pro Bowl. They had the Hester Series and everything there. But they weren't like family oriented. Like they didn't have competitions for amateur skate, it was just skateboarders. A just a business. Yeah. It's just a weird thing to hear that from the get go, you guys have had skate parks where you have to pay. Like I grew up, yeah. there was no such oh. thing as a skate park. I mean, a, 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 something that was owned by somebody. It was just facilities in parks and you went there and did whatever. Like to know that I would have to get money from my parents to skate, like that just wasn't going to happen. They'd be like, it's not real. Well, like, at some point, especially down here, because those parks closed, but then Oasis Skate Park was here. Del Mar obviously re remained the, lo <clears throat> the longest, but uh, at some point, if you went to Del Mar enough, no one cared. Like the, the employees well, aren't. Grant working. worked there. So. Yeah, Grant <laughs> worked there. And so they're just like. Okay. So, you know, so at some point you, you got you got in good graces with, with the, the, the pro shop crew. And they were just there because they needed a job. It wasn't like they were trying to save the place or, yeah. you know, be beholden to the owners. So they were just like, yeah, go ahead and give us pizza. And <laughs> Sweet. I mean, yeah. fair. But, that, but so for us, it was like a public skate park. If you got to a certain level. Right. And, and you got to know everyone, they just let you in. I remember uh, McGill's was the first time I ever was at a skate park that you had to pay to get in there. And I obviously oh paid for the first couple of times, but <laughs> then I got sponsored by Planet Earth. So I think this is probably the third time I was in America. And I used to wear a Planet Earth t-shirt without fail because I couldn't spell Planet Earth. Yeah. And you had to write down your sponsor to get in for free. <laughs> And I didn't want anyone to know. This is back when I was like, I don't want anyone to know how illiterate I am. So I'd just be like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Planet Earth. Can I go? <laughs> yes, you can. Okay. And I would never not show up without the Planet Earth t-shirt because I, I probably still yeah. can't. I remember some parks had a, had a team list. Yeah. Remember? So they, so you'd, they'd look up like, well, what team? Okay. All right. Yeah, I remember McGill's dad coming out. And I was doing tail grab yeah, he was fives. the enforcer. I was doing tail grab fives for the first time. I might have made my first one on that ramp. I'm not sure. But he came out and he was like, oh, I see you're doing some 540. He's like, you know who invented the first one? <laughs> and I was like, dude. I, didn't, you know, I was like, yes, I do. But I also was like, shut up. Like, <laughs> yes, I, I'm, a, I, I'm aware I met Mike McGill's skate park. And I am aware that he invented the McTwist. But what you don't know, Pops, is this is a tail grab 540. This is another level. But yeah, I just was like, yes. That's funny. But I remember looking at him like, you have no idea what I'm doing over here. I'm light years ahead of your son. Not true, but anyway. This guy did some mean 540s. Yeah. Melon grab. Yeah, we were around the same time. Sluggo, My myself, and you were the first backside 540 guys besides him. Like that, yeah. which, which meant we were the first guys to yeah, do backside so 540. Yeah, grab that melon, you mean? Grab yeah, melon. Yeah. Did, when did you grab melon? You did it in a video. You, when you did, you did. Yeah, I don't know. You did every did 540 right in a bonus brigade video, and it was like, okay. He, when I, once I got my ramp and fall break, then yeah, I, yeah, that's yeah. what I tried to do every single. Stale fish, tail grab, yeah. melon. He did. He did all of them. Indy, he did them all. Yeah. So the 540 was the demise of my winning. Right. In pro professional skateboard. Right, because there was a time there you can't do mute ones. I tried. And I mean, backside ones weren't like a. They well, were I had considered access. harder. Well, all I had access was my 12 foot wide, 11 foot high ramp in my backyard. And yeah. you carved them. Uh, well, you, you carved to learn a 540, yeah. I didn't have a park, didn't have a huge ramp, didn't. 
I had 12 foot wide, 11 feet high ramp. But you have yours. Well, More than I mean, when I, feet. no, I meant, <laughs> no, this is before I even ever landed one. I'm like, oh, the 540 McGill. Okay. 80, 1984. Okay. And then everyone's just like, oh, we have to learn a new trick. Yeah. Okay. What is this trick? Okay. You grab mute. I could do mute errors. Um, but I, 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 in Animal Chin, there's a couple I spin at Boris. Remember? Yeah. And so I was trying them, but I was too timid to even try to commit to land. So I gave up and I'm like, okay, well, what can I do? That's a 540. Oh, I can do units. Yep. You know what a unit is, yep. right? It's a Miller flip with another half, put your hand down with another half twist. So I'm like, oh, well, that's my 540. But it wasn't good enough to get in the top three. <laughs> right, because the know? big twist was some hot shit. Yeah, well, when yeah. he was doing 540s and then Hosoi started doing 540s and they started going higher, it's like, and McGill was doing it. And then Lance was doing it. I mean, oh, Lance yeah. Mountain spent, I remember the process of him. He spent he a whole tortured. month. He was oh, tortured. He was tortured. He spent a whole month in his backyard every single day trying to spin a 540 to learn it. And I remember there's footage of him finally landing and just taking off his helmet and just throwing it super hard. And like, not even happy that he landed. He was super pissed. Right. It was a pure obligation. Yeah. yeah. I, and, but once he landed that 540, he started getting up there in place and he actually won a contest. Yeah. Uh, right. I remember he would always do them on he extensions. Won yep. I was like, what's your deal yeah. with doing them on yeah. extensions? He's oh, yeah. like, because I don't hang up. <laughs> I'm like, do you know how fucking wrong that is? Like your whole, <laughs> I no wonder it I, took I had, that long to make one. Cause like just, and I could also tell he was one of those guys that he did a McTwist when his name was called out. There was no practice yeah. McTwist. It was like, <laughs> yeah. now, okay, <laughs> now I will do it. I'm like, so you don't even spin one before hitting the fuck? No, like it, it was balls no, to the wall. No, he did not enjoy it. No, no, you could tell it was but, like. But I had that conversation, same conversation. Like why the extension? Yeah. It's got vert. I'm like, yeah, but never mind. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, it didn't make any can't, sense. Can't explain but I had seen video before where he'd landed on the extension on a McTwist, and I'm like, oh, okay. If yeah. that was no extension, you'd right. be dead. So yeah, maybe it was a good idea. Yeah. Hey everybody, Jason Ellis talking in and representing Hawk Wolf, the greatest podcast in my lunchbox. We're talking about Fitbod. Uh I don't have it yet, but I'm looking into this thing, and basically it's an app that uh, you tell the app all the things that you have in your house or wherever you go to work out, and then it makes different workouts for you every day and checks on how you're doing fitness-wise, like uh, it, your weight and all that kind of stuff, and it motivates you as well. So it's a thing that I think you can hook up to your smartwatch, and then it's kind of like a personal trainer. And I've talked to people about working out at home, especially because of all the stuff where we can't go places. Um, to me, I've already learned a bunch of different exercises. If you don't know those exercises, and this can explain how to learn new exercises, because you don't want to do the same thing over and over again. You get bored and then you quit and then you get fat. You don't want to do that. Fitbod seems like it's got it covered. I can't wait to get one. I'm going to use my, my discount code. Uh, if you if if you want to kick it off right and start your customized fitness plan, so you can customize this thing from Fitbod. Twenty five percent off membership when you sign up at fitbod.me slash wolf. That's twenty five percent off your membership at fitbod.me slash wolf. Check it out, everybody. Thanks. Yeah. So the McTwist, nineteen eighty four. 1985 comes, 1986, 1987, 1988, 1989. Uh -oh, and I'm out. like, dude, I'm like, my placings are pretty much going lower because everyone else is learning 540s. And there's just no way that I could ever like do well in a contest. And I remember going on uh, a PAL tour with McGill to New, Z New Zealand, Australia, New Zealand. Yeah. And this is the first time I ever saw, going back to the skate parks, public skate parks in Australia. I'm like, this is so cool. We yeah. don't even have this in the States. Yeah. You guys have free skate parks. Yeah, and when you get in hurt, Australia. nobody sues anybody. They just go home. <laughs> yeah, that's no, it. but like nobody was at these parks too. Yeah. They were yeah. empty, but they were free. And I'm like, you guys have access to a free vert. We'd just go to the, some park and there's a vert ramp there. There was no like little like learning how to like street course or anything. Just yeah. boom, vert ramp. Yep. Free skate park. Yeah. That's what I grew <laughs> like, up with. And nobody was Montevale. riding them. Yeah, mini ramps came in like 
the late 90s. Yeah. Like, I had yeah. not skated a mini ramp. I saw it on video. The first mini ramp I ever skated was I came to America and skated an H, like a ramp. I remember Jimmy Mart Martinez was the first pro I ever saw in America, and we went to a mini ramp that had hips and spines. Mm. I'd never even skated a mini ramp, and I was like, oh my. You guys have a track. <laughs> you know, I, like I remember, I remember ollieing the hip and just being like my brain going, "Yeah, you're going over a hip like a spine." I'm like, my brain is like, "How am I doing this?" Because I watched Jinx yeah, yeah. do it, and I'm like, "Oh wow, that's how you do that." But I remember like pivot to fakies on mini ramps. I'd already done them on vert before I did it on a mini ramp. Right, I was right, like, right. "It's way yeah. harder over here." Yeah. <laughs> Like taking real slams on mini ramps because I'm so vert that I don't know how to bail on a mini ramp. Like I just be like, ah, jump to the flat. I also realize now that's why Christian could do crazy airs on mini ramps because when they first came to Torquay, there was a mini ramp and they did a demo Gons mm -hmm. and Christian and Lance and Christian was just doing six foot method airs on a mini ramp. Yeah, because he like, had the brown balls. Yeah, yeah. Here, yeah, he, and he came plans. from that. He and I was like, yep. he's riding this like a vert yeah. ramp. Yeah. So 1989, I'm on tour with McGill. We're in New Zealand. And I could already do ollie backside reverts. Okay. Like that was one trick that I learned Which from a mini ramp. Way harder. Yeah, ollie backside reverts. And I'm like, we're, we're doing this demo. And I'm like, I'm going to learn that hawk maneuver, that 541. Because you had already done ollie 540s. Ollie 540s. So I could, I, I yeah. had… Backs at Ollie Reverts right at coping. Yeah. And I remember I was go going to meet Lee Ralph there. And I'm like, I'm going to show Lee Ralph like backs at Ollie Revert, yeah. you know, like in, in my demo run. And I remember uh, I was doing, I'm doing them. And then I'm thinking like, I've never done a 540. Maybe I can do an Ollie one. Right. Yeah. So I tried it a couple of times and the board was flailing around. I was like, there's just no way, no way. So then I go, what if I, cause I could already do like Les Twist where you, you do uh you fake your rock, go up and 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 do a, a 360 grab grab yeah. melon and come around. Can't, can't say cab melon. What's that? We can't we can't say cab melon. Oh, he comes less twist. But you won't. <laughs> but you won't. You don't you don't say cab into anything because you no. you a cab. No. Why not? Embrace it. You got 360 <laughs> on your motorcycle. No, I want to know is do you not say cab because it's your name or because you're like well if it's caballero you don't grab so you can't say cab to melon. Um, I just never understood why people call uh. Cab this cab that grabbing because a, a caballero yeah, is a fakie 360 at. all air. Okay, fair enough. So it's your trick. You get you, you, you call. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna argue with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't want to go into that. I'm gonna lose followers again. <laughs> Wait, you I don't want to get into it. Yeah. I don't want to help you. Yeah. Look, hey, Caballero <laughs> is legendary. It's his trick. He yeah. we'll stick with skateboarding. Came from him. <laughs> and when we saw it in the magazine, I didn't believe it. Yeah. Like I it was truly when I saw the 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 sequence, uh, the sequence was Upland, right? The, the first big sequence. Uh, the first was sequence Marina? was um, Marina and then Upland. And then I had an But ad. the Upland one was like way out. Yeah, that was from the Gold Cup series. Yeah. Yeah. I think that the first sequence I saw was the Upland one. And I was like, that, yeah. that's so a fake sequence. Upland was a piece of shit too. So like, that oh, seems like a really see, hard place to do a Cavalier. It was so scary. The and was the wall huge. he did it And on. it was like four foot of vert, right? About a two feet straight, two feet, almost three. But with eight foot transitions. Yeah. Like yeah. A, and then, yeah. but then the coping was huge. Yeah. Like that. And where he did it, it, it definitely kinked on the setup, if not the, the actual wall itself. Yeah. And he just bonked out and it's a sequence. And I was like, did they piece together that sequence? Like, <laughs> yeah. that is unreal. And that changed everything. Right. Because once you saw it, you're like, okay, now it's on. You no, I didn't think. It's on. What do you mean? <laughs> it was like, that's it. He's the only guy that could do that. How long before somebody else did a Caballero? Uh, and was it, and I, was it I might have been the next one. <laughs> I, I learned, it. yeah. yeah. We're, on, we're, I on a, wait, we're going on a tangent here. Whoa, nobody can do it. Let me just <laughs> yeah, wait, hold on. We, we're back to 540. We'll, we'll tell that story. Bro. We'll tell that story. So we're back to 540. Anyway. Sorry. No, I want this to be about my first Caballero. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only reason we invited Steve here. Yeah. Well, you really are good, Tony. <laughs> anyway, 540, you said. No, I just wanted to explain the 540, like what happened. Yes. So I'm flailing around, 1989, flailing around trying to do his trick, the, the Ollie 540. There's no way. So I went up and grabbed it. And I came around. I'm like, I could land this. And this was a two-hour demo. And I finally came around and stuck one. And I'm like, Oh my goodness, I learned a 540 in two hours. Yeah. 
because in my mind, I was like after four determined, years, whatever. Yeah. After, yeah, after all those years of, or after 1984 right. of like, but from 1984 to 1989, I, I landed a 540 trying it in two hours, right. which is when you have your mind set on something and you're, you're focused and you're determined, it doesn't matter how long, it, it, it can happen really quick. You know, it didn't have to take a month trying it. It didn't have to take a year trying it. It's like well, I learned it in two hours. But you'd also put in this other McTwist work beforehand. No, I stopped doing yeah, it. But you completely. had spun them for a while in '84. Do you think this? And I hope 80, I'm not being a, yeah. offensive, but do you think that a McTwist to you is more difficult because of your neck? No, no. Because you don't when you when you flip a McTwist, you have to like. It's more difficult because you're blind for a second. Right. You don't know but where the you're backside at. one, why does the backside one why because why I it's easier for me, but at first I didn't know a backside 540. I did McTwist first. And then when I did backside fives, I was like, I know everyone's hopped up on it, like it's real cool, but it's easier. I could tell. It, what it was is because I don't know that, why. what's easier, melon? Yeah, melon's easier. It's not, it's it's just more I, I, I what you're comfortable I, with. I think it's more, yeah, whatever. It's it's, it's what I was preference. comfortable with at yeah. the time. So at the time I was doing um Ollie tail grabs, 360 yeah. tail grabs. I was doing uh, mute, 360 mutes. Yeah. I was doing, uh, you know, Les Twists yeah. grabbing. So I could do indie, indie gay twists as well. So I was like, I'm like, I'm just going to grab it backside. So I landed it and I started to just do it a lot. And I remember um, skating, going back to San Jose Warehouse and skating with Bod Boyle. That's where I saw it. You did? That's where I blew my knee out before a contest and I thought I was the only person in the world that could do backside 540s and then you did one and I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget it because I was like, fuck, he's probably going to beat me now because of that. Like I was, that's all yeah. I was thinking and then I met Sluggo and was like, fuck. <laughs> but because I, I got on the oh, yeah, plane Slugger coming here too, going, yeah. I'm going to. You were there at the warehouse? Yeah. Because I remember I it was my, Steve I Douglas. I that night. It was Bod Boyle and Steve Douglas and I remember showing those guys and they're like, Dude, you're gonna win a contest yeah. again, and I hadn't won a contest since shoot 1982. Right, 82 hadn't been never, hadn't won a pro contest, and I remember we skated that contest. It was the contest that we were together in uh, was supposed to be a contest in Mexico, remember? And it got canceled, so it went moved to the Vision. Where I don't else? remember that. Well, you were getting married the next day. Oh yeah, the Vision, uh, the hip ramp. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he was getting yeah. married the the next day. Yeah. And I remember that was the 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 first time I had won because I so I had 91. The, 91. I think. Was it 91? Yeah, 90 or 91. Yeah. Cuz that's that's when I had him. Yeah. That's when I went to Munster the first year and you could do them then too. Yeah. So I remember doing that in the contest and then we were and then I forgot we I don't, what happened was there was like no time limit or something. And we just kept doing like, and we started doing like old school tricks, like layback yeah. airs and foot plants. And I remember I did this. Mickey Alba took a, basically a two minute run. Yeah. For real, in his run. And right. Omar was ripping two, two minutes. But it, did it involve him doing an axle stall for a long period no, of time no, no, a couple no, no. of times? Because no. he did do that. Well, and kicking his thing over, making sure it's in the middle. Adjust, adjust. <laughs> I remember, but I remember watching it going like, I'm exhausted watching him. He's got to be so tired. And at one yeah. point he went up the wall, I was like, I'm so tired, dude. Kept going. It, I mean, what a silly thing yeah. that it was more endurance, but it, no, it was, was so it was cool. And I remember they called my name, and I was just like, I just I couldn't even go and get my trophy. I just broke down crying because I was just like, oh my goodness, I won so awesome. a contest again. That's awesome, dude. And it was because of the five forty. Right. I was like, I was like, okay, it's on. Yeah, it's on. So then the Le, Le Grand Bernon came. Yeah, and then uh, Munster came. Yeah, as well. And I was spinning five forties there, and. uh yeah, that's when I felt like I was in the game again. Right. Yeah. I remember that. That was the the day I showed up at that monster contest. Nobody knew who I was. And then by Sunday, everybody knew who I was. Yeah. And Sluggo and I met each other. And you other. were doing 540s or were you doing melon I was doing backside fives and tail grab fives. Oh, okay. And once again, before you, I saw you and I was like, fuck. <laughs> you can do backside fives. <laughs> but I was still under the impression that I was the only person that could do a tarot grab five besides yeah. yours truly. Yeah. And then Sluggo stand on the other side of the deck with long blonde hair. I've got long blonde <laughs> hair. He's got gold wings on. I've got gold wings on. I'm like, what the fuck's this dude think he's doing? And I can tell he's like, what the fuck is this dude think he's doing? <laughs> and he doesn't know. And I don't know that we can both do these tricks. Yeah, and then yeah. we drop them like through the afternoon. And, I, and, and, and he did the 
the backs of one. I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever figures, but I got tail grab. You don't know about that. And then he did one. I was like, oh my God, we got ourselves a serious problem here. Like I got to have to really pull out some stuff. But I remember it was uh, Chris Miller, Steve Caballero, uh, Buck Smith, and who else? Because I got fifth. But everybody that was in front of me was my idols. You know, so I was like, I won. I pretty much won. <laughs> <laughs> like I got fifth. And I, Danny, I remember Danny was like, dude, you should have got fourth. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. You're, you didn't beat me. <laughs> so shut up. What do you Danny, think I should get? Danny was terrible in contest. Yeah, right? Uh, he was the worst. Because I, I get it, though. Like back then, yeah. if you're like, I'm going to do a medolly in my contest, right? I'm like, probably a bad choice of moves. <laughs> yeah. That's a very inconsistent maneuver. No, I felt bad. For Danny, because I was just like, you, I, he had the talent, but yeah, you could just obviously. tell the pride was getting ahead of him as far as being a contest skater. And like, you know, I, I remember what you said in the Bones Brigade documentary about like having this different mindset of like, okay, I got to tone it down for contests. And then after the contest, I'm going to go and invent yeah, tricks. Right. You don't do these tricks in contests. And for me, I would see Danny and struggling because I know how talented he was. It's like, dude, this… Dude's never going to do good in a contest because he's trying to do the hardest thing. And his baseline ever. tricks would have put him in the top. Yeah. Right. But he could never stay. He he was one of those guys. And I think that's why he invented so many tricks is because he'd do something and then he'd go straight into the next thing. Yeah. He would never… Like if he learned some trick that was, in, was incredibly difficult, he never did it again. He's yeah. like, you got on video? Good. Now I'm going to the next yeah. thing. So he could never do… He could never duplicate mm. what he'd done because he's just too busy to try and move on to another yeah. trick. Well, that's a, that was the type of skateboarder he was. He was just more of a progressive skateboarder. Right. Let's capture the moment and let's move on. Yep. You know, and I think you had that too, but he also had the mindset of like, I know how competition works and I'm just going to tone yeah, it down. Yeah, there was strategy. And, you know, it's weird now because skating is so pure and soulful and no one… Just because competition is one element, element yeah. of skating now. In our day, it was the only thing. Right. Yeah. And so when people are just like, oh, contest skater, I was like, well, yeah, because that's what we had to do. And we had to have a strategy and we had to, we had to place. You're not going to get your picture in a magazine if you didn't, if you didn't place well. I'm but, from the same thing. All I knew was right. vote contest. Yeah. I just always thought like, like your, your strategy to do well in a contest. I'm like, yeah, so that I don't have to get a real job. <laughs> yeah. Like you can frown upon me yeah, while so I go lame. to the ramp yeah. for my living. Like oh man, let me let me let me appease you and and go work at a supermarket, you know what I mean, and then not do contests. Like <laughs> shut up. Or drop in like I don't care and try the hardest yeah, thing ever yeah, and I, bail. I was totally okay yeah. with everybody knowing I cared, but I do want to tell this story because I'll never forget, and it's still to this day like so heavy. You there was a contest at Colton, probably eighty one, mm -hmm. right? No, nineteen eighty. Because nineteen eighty. Because uh, well, the Gold Cup series was eighty to. 81. Yeah, but it was… Okay, it was Gold Cup. Yeah, because the yeah. last two contests was Marina and the last contest was Pipeline. Mm -hmm. And those were, I think, might… It flowed into 81, but it started okay. in 80. So, I was amateur there. And I was amateur there and I, and I watched him in practice do… Correct me if I'm wrong. Andrek Tafegi. Yes. Ooh. Andrek Tafegi into a switch invert in 1980. Backwards invert. Backwards invert. There was no switch stance. <laughs> Whatever. We called a switch stance invert. We did back then. Because yeah. if you're going backwards, that's switch stance. Yeah. So we Unlike just... skiers, it's, you're going backwards, <laughs> you then... morons. And then… I can't stand it. They're like, oh, switch 1080. I'm like, it's not switch. You're fucking sitting on a toilet, man. You're going backwards. Yeah. You're <laughs> trying to tell me you're going switch. Your butt's facing that way. Yeah. You're going backwards. Let's go backwards. Stop trying to buy our lit shit. So obvious. Whatever. So in well, in my day, it was a switch. You're gonna lose invert. ski followers now. <laughs> come on, no man. come on, everybody, no come get me. <laughs> and then into a half cab or caballero. Um, caballeros weren't invented that yet. Then I hadn't done. Was hadn't half done cabs it yet. invented before you caballeros? Oh, no. you. So then you did an algarial after that. I might have did uh, a gay twist. Okay. Yeah. So any one of those tricks in that time frame was. Next level. Crazy. Yeah. The fact that he did th those three in a row. Oh, no, I didn't do the get. No, it was nothing. Uh, I know I, you did something. I think I did an Algario. That's, That's right. It. So it was Algario. That's right. So, so he did. Sorry. Scratch that. He does Andrix Fagey, switch stance invert into an Algario. Any one of those tricks was considered like the, of the highest order. Yeah. And I watched them all happen in one run in practice. And I was like, I'm never going to get there. That's out of control. That's crazy because you ended up being the guy that did that. 
Like well, I feel like every contest, watching him, like I was so inspired which is, by it. That's why it. I absolutely think it's, like to know that. But that was it. Like that was the first time where it was like, oh my, God, you can do a hard trick into another hard <laughs> trick, yeah. into another hard trick. Yeah. Like that's unreal. Well, so that really rubbed Andrick, off on you. So my Andrick DeFakey was probably straight up, straight down one. This no, I went would go like this. And I think I was probably this high out with my hand on the coping. It's so sketchy. It, it was like, matter. and then let go. So and what? It. That yeah. is so dangerous. But I want to explain the backwards invert and how that was invented or how Please. I did it. So back then, there was no such thing as video. Yeah. There was no video, anything. It was just Super 8, Super 8 camera. If you filmed your friends with your dad's Super 8 camera, you waited a week, get it developed, wait a week, and then you could watch it on your little thing that you put the reels on and watch it with this little screen. Wow. Right? These guys are old. You guys. <laughs> you got, I feel like they're telling me about the This is called film. Wheel. Super 8. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you, have to, you have a whiteboard and then you like <laughs> focus it on the whiteboard. <laughs> no. oh, we didn't even have that yet. I just had the little projector, little square thing with the two reels. Oh my God. So this is how we watch Oh, skate. you had it like you're watching it in the player Yeah, itself. because you could okay. like yeah, splice my, it and splice them all a, together. My dad had a projector. We were big time. Ooh. And then I would put it on Rich a little piece dude. of paper. <laughs> Rich, dude. Just so you know, both of you are not sounding fancy at all right now. Holy so crap. So I'm watching our my little video that I shot of inverts yeah. at Winchester, and I'm watching it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, so you I'm going to play, play it backwards. backwards. That's right. Yeah. I'm going to play it backwards. I'm like, that would be so cool to do it backwards. So I looked at that, and I'm like, I'm going to go to the skate park and try that. I'm going to try it. That is insane. And that's what ended up becoming eggplants. Because you're grabbing the same way as an eggplant. I'm grabbing the opposite hand, opposite. You know what I mean? Invert. Wait, you did switch your hand plant before anyone did an eggplant? Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking I about. I went home and um, I went to the skate park, which was my second home. And I'm like, I'm going to do the backwards invert because yeah. I just saw I could do it like this. And I learned it. And then I took it to Colton and did it in the contest. Skiers. You're doing a backwards 1080. You're not doing a switch one. No. <laughs> I hate to break it to you. So, yeah. And then, uh, so in the Gold Cup series, there was a month between each each competition. So when we we do the same thing, with like, like Tony said, go back to the park and just try to learn tricks. Because the only way that you could do well in a contest was have a new trick at every contest. Okay. And I learned this formula from Eddie Alguera because… This dude was like doing all these tricks that nobody did. Frontside rocks. No one did that. Right. Frontside inverts with your hand on a coping. Nobody did that. Al Gario, uh, 360 invert. Nobody did that. And I even learned, Eddie, I heard this, heard this story. So Eddie was on the Veriflex team. And every time he would skate uh, at Colton, when Alan Losier or Grisham or any of those guys would come, he'd stop doing his trick. Wow, that's like freestyle moto. Really? Got, yeah, they wouldn't show people their oh, stuff. Yeah. Like you, everyone had to keep it on a lock. His, even his own teammates would just like stop skating and not show anybody. I'm like, oh my god, that guy's serious. But he won the competition. Yeah, it was, it, he was, would, it, was, it was a flex with strategy yeah. for sure. Yeah. I don't know, man. If I saw him doing that in Algeria, I'd be like, fuck, man, that's all you. Like, <laughs> wait, wait, on, no, but they didn't the, even get that point. They didn't even get to see that yet. He would just wait until, until the, the competition. Did he do it in practice on the day or just wait until uh, he's yeah, right? He may have, yeah. Eddie would be the kind of guy that would show up at the skate park at 9 a.m. and skate alone and do that. Like, okay. That, that's the kind of vibe. It makes sense because it yeah. seems like I'm now doing this podcast for a while. It seems like he was, everybody kind of based their skateboarding on him. Like all you guys, you know? I did. Yeah. I mean, I would like, we'd just look at the magazines and who's the best, who's doing the gnarliest things. And then in the magazine, there was sequences. So not only was there a photo, because like a lot of the, before sequences were around, there were just photos of guys flying out. Yeah, we're like, like Jay Adams so and like, bailed. dude, yeah. backs at airs and their foot's flying off. We're like, You're not making that's it. sick, but did he make it? Right. You know, and then all of a sudden we just started seeing sequences. And then we'd look at the sequences and like, oh, okay. That's how you do it. That's every movement. And I'd study the sequences. Like, you can then go to the skate park and I'm going to try to learn this trick. And Eddie was the dude. Like, he's- It's funny ahead. you're talking about yeah. how you see the sequence and then you go, that's how you can do it. I feel like Australia was so far behind when I started skateboarding that I've told Tony, like, we didn't have a magazine. I heard there was a guy named Tony Hawk that could do finger flips. And I'm like, nah, bullshit. <laughs> And then the magazine it was a legend with the sequence. <laughs> and I'm like, no way. Yeah. 
But then going to America and seeing all of you day to day do it in front of me, it, it made me a thousand times better in a day. Cause I was yeah. like, oh, that's yeah, how I you never, do it. I, yeah, yeah. I never thought that I learned something from sequence. I was just hyped that there was proof okay. that it happened. Because yeah. like you said, you see all these shots of people and they're like, they're just bailing. Yeah. And it's like surfing. When people start doing air surfing, yeah. as skaters, you saw a photo, you're like, dude, yeah. come on. You didn't make that. You didn't even land And now they way. make it. But, <laughs> but yeah, but That's now they the make it. But, but, but the sequences would just be like <laughs> proof of it. But I remember a sequence of him doing a frontside board slide. I mean, there are just these, these images that are seared in my head where yeah. he did a frontside board slide and I was like, what? Yeah, and it's proof that he made it. You, and you can slide going yeah. that way? Like, yeah. that was unreal. So… That's how progression was. It was based on your elements and what you had, your equipment. So board slides, they, they invented these things called rails where yeah. you put on the plastic things, put on your board. So it actually could slide because there was no such thing as, uh, there was no saucing the coping. There was right. no wax. There was no spray. It was and complete coping was cement, chunked out. Right. chunky yeah. coping. But if you put these plastic things on the bottom, you could slide farther. And if you put these plastic things on your trucks, you could actually grind the grind. shitty coping. We weren't grinding, you were yeah. whatever. Skimming across it. Scraping. Right. We scraped things. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought We didn't of grind. That we scraped because we weren't grinding nothing. It was scraping. We were so, slash scrapers. Yeah. Smith, slash Smith scraping. Yeah. No, so… Back then, like I said, I saw Eddie Alguera's um, sequence of Frontside Rock. I got to learn the Frontside Rock. Yeah. Okay, so I learned the Frontside Rock and Roll. We had rails. They had this, they had this little pool at Winchester called the Little Pool because it was tiny. And for some reason, they resined the coping. The only pool I've ever seen that Some's had awesome. resin. No, it was just, it was resin. Like they took resin. It was no, I know, I'm just saying. Resin on really it. Self-insults. And I'm like, shoot. And the... Do you remember the little pool? It was, yeah. It was like this. Yeah. It was like two feet high, and it was a little bank. And I'm like, and I could already do board slides because board slides was a thing. And I'm like, I'm gonna try to f- slide my front side rock. Yeah. And I remember getting on there and sliding for like a block. And I'm like, dude, I'm gonna try to do two blocks in the little shallow end. So I slid two blocks, and I'm like, I'm taking it to the pool. And the pool was. A pro bowl, which was eight foot tranny, two feet avert, big coping. And I went from the little pool pool straight to the big pool. I and I remember that. just going and sliding and coming in, sliding and coming in. And finally, um, I landed it, front side board slide. And then I took it to Marina Del Rey. And then that's where I think and that's I'm where Tony, you did. He, he saw that. But it was because of the elements of what I had, rails for one. Yeah. And then the slippery coping in the baby pool made me think, oh, I'm going to try to slide this front side. I mean, everyone's sliding back, so why not slide a front side? Yeah, well, I, I know why. Because it's, it's it, extremely difficult. Yeah. You're the only one that <laughs> can do front side rock so easily. Back, you do it. Hit your yeah. head or slip forward and smash your face. Yeah, or, catch, had, or catch the rail on your heels. But I had yeah. wrist guards with gloves. I had my helmet, my knee pads with caps on them. Yo, you were ready I'm good to go. go. My bad. <laughs> okay, uh, let, let wait, me take us, wait, take us through the cabal aerial. Okay. Oh, awesome. Yeah, Kev, I'm sure you've uh, told, told the story. 360 but... all yeah. Whatever, huh? you dickhead. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> God. Anyway, Stacy, Stacy named it the Caballero. Have you ever said it? Stacy, Stacy yeah, yeah. in the Airwalk too. I've said. He did. He yeah, named the Airwalk. Did he? Because he wrote the caption for it. Is he that why? He wrote the caption. In That's the what Bones happened Brigade. to me. He wrote. He wrote. Tony does the Airwalk. Like walks through the air, and then everyone's like, Airwalk. Like, uh, okay. You didn't name it. No. No. T- uh, Stacy named. Coined it, Caballero. Smart. That was a yeah. good name. Now, so now people rip. That's it off. the story. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. See you later, everybody. Log like and describe. Caballero. Ah, uh, shoot. Okay, this is in the Gold Cup series. Uh, in between, there was five contests. The first one was at Oasis, your local yes. skate park. Second one was at um, Big O. Yep. Yep. Third one was at Colton with the backwards invert. So between Colton and Marina Del Rey, um, I invented the Caballero. And so… How'd that come about? So I was at Winchester and the Pro Bowl was there. And I was sitting on top. There was a, 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 a snake, like a snake run, a mogul, like a clover bowl. 
Remember that Clover Bowl yeah. mm-hmm. up there? And there was like a bunch of hips and everything. And I remember just sitting there watching one of these pro skateboarders uh, skate the skate the bowl. His name was Robert Schiffelli, um, aka the Fly. He rode for a company called um, Tunnel Skate Skateboards. And what his thing was was he would do this thing called the RB slide, where you you go up and you put your hand on the coping and you slide to fakie because he couldn't do fakie rocks yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, I Hardly those. anyone could. Yeah. So everyone was doing that trick. Yeah. So RB is for Rick Blackheart. That's why it's called the RB slide. He put your hand and slide to fakie. And then he would come up and do 360 kick turns. Ah. Right? Yeah. On the tile. And you started. And then I was like, whatever, fakie 360 kick turn. That's uh, like whatever. But you it's can... 1970s trick. Like who does that? Yeah. Yeah. Right? I remember like, there was a sequence of Alan Gelfin doing it, Delmar, and that's hitting right. his truck. And he was actually he his hit his co- he did a three sixty right yeah at his wheels and his truck went on the coping and it was like like basically like cap pivot yeah but, yeah so I mean we but he didn't leave the wall but it was still pivot. crazy it was yeah, still so, crazy I mean I didn't look down on it but I was just like oh cool you know that's his trick yeah. you know and all of a sudden he did an RB slide and he lost like his balance and he went up and he hit the coping and the board flinged in the air and he flung it in the air and then he went around and did a three sixty. And I looked at that and I'm like, I wonder if you could do that. Yeah. You know, because I could already do, remember fakie ollies yep. were a thing. So we could already do fakie ollies. Yeah. And another one, uh, I think Eddie Algera invented that one, the fakie ollie. Yeah. I don't know. So 1980. I'm not that old, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so 1980, fakie ollies. We could already do fakie ollies. Yes. And I'm like, I wonder if I could do a fakie ollie. And spin around yeah. and come around all the way around. And I, you know, coming down backwards was not a thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we weren't even doing airs to fakie back no, then. No. I mean, if anything, we were doing fakie rocks or board slides to fakie. Did somebody and back then it. do blunt to fakies? Like no. The whole <laughs> no, 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 no. That was a decade later. The mute one. No, no, no. No, okay. no. Nobody okay. did that. No one. Was that Kevin Staub? Yes. Yeah, but the only way you got speed was to do basically what that is like. It's yeah. like a bird to f- RB slide, slide to fakie, a fakie rock or a board slide to fakie was the only way you get speed. A board so slide it, to fakies were rare. Right. You have to be high level for that. That yeah. was more of a trick. You that didn't was get a speed trick, not it. to right. get speed. Yes. Right. Yeah. So he left, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go in the pool and try it. So I just kept trying it, and I just kept spinning around, and board flying away, flying away. And I just kept trying. I'm like, I know this can be done. And I remember hitting the coping, landing three quarters of the way. And like, oh, shoot. All right. I'm getting close. All right. And I remember going back to skate park again the next day and, and, and uh, trying it, trying it. Until the point where I landed three quarters of the way and I slid the other quarter way around. Okay. And landed it and yeah. rolled away in Winchester's pool. And I called Stacy. And I go, Stacey, I got a new trick for <laughs> Marina Del Rey. And he's like, what is it? I'm like, well, it's a fakie 360 Ollie Air. And he's like, what? Because yeah. nobody did anything like yeah. that back then. He's like, what do you mean? I'm yeah, like, was, well, I do a fakie to, Ollie and yeah. I spin around and <laughs> come all the way around. We used to call Stacey and explain tricks to him and he didn't get it. Yeah. On the he's phone, like, what? He's like, come on, man. I don't I don't even get that. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, come hey, on. Hey, man. What are you oh, talking about, on. man? <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> so, here comes Marina Del Rey, Gold Cup. I get picked up by Stacy and his Volvo. I get to um, the parking lot, and Neil Blender and Lance Mountain are heard about this trick, and they're waiting for me in the parking lot, and they're like, we know about the new trick. We want it. And I, like... Not, not even like getting out of the car. They're like putting my, we're going up to the upper keyhole right now. We want to see the trick. Right. And like- At Marina. Yeah. And so I'm like getting up. They're pretty much putting my it's pads like the same on. Story like, as here, here's, your, here's your knee pads. Here's your helmet. Let's see it. Like, so awesome. I'm like, okay. So I go up there and I try it a couple of times. Of course, I'm like, I don't have it wired yet. So I do a couple of them and bail, come around, spin around, bail. And then I landed one and they were just like, they were blown away when I- I did it. Um, Everyone was. At that contest. And I did it in practice because we would come to the day before to practice. And uh, so that was my debut of the trick at Marina. But what happened was I fell in my prelim runs before I got to 
do the trick. Oh, you didn't make the final. I didn't make the final. Oh. So I didn't even get to do the trick yeah. in the contest. I did it in practice. There's film of it, but I did so crappy at that contest. I think I ended up getting like uh, 15th place. Wow. So I went from like Oasis getting like 11th because I didn't make the cut there uh, to getting third place at um, uh, Big O. Mm -hmm. Then I won Colton with those that combination of saying. Then I went to Marina, got 15th with the Cabal Ariel, which I couldn't even do in the contest. And then we had a month later for Upland. And then that's when I got it wired. Okay. And How long before it was called the Cabal Ariel? Uh, it, it wasn't called the Cabal Ariel until after Upland because... That was the I'm, sequence. The, the sequence the in the magazine. Stacey wrote the caption. Yeah. Okay, and so. I won that contest. And then he wrote, you know, Steve wins Upland with the Cabal Ariel. And so Wait, he, how come he's writing the... The captions. He, because we're doing a Bones Brigade intelligence report. Oh, wait. This isn't in a magazine. This is in the, in the Bones Brigade. In the Bones. But, he, but he also, he also d would, would do articles and stuff for Thrasher. So. Okay. No, Thrasher wasn't around yet. But that, that, the Airwalk, that's how he… Yeah. Like, he named it because he was writing the caption or whatever for, for some contest. And then… Because everyone's just kind of doing… Like, it was the industry was so small… Yeah. That everyone's wearing all different hats. And right. it was like… Yeah, he, Fausto started Thrasher. I'm going to help him with it. You know what I mean? No one, like, it wasn't really a job. Right. It was more like everyone's just pitching in. And this is when, when Skateboarder started transitioning to Action Now. To what? Action Now. Skateboarder's yeah, Skateboarder Action Magazine now. became Action Now. Oh, okay. I did not. That was oh, the yeah. first. Did not know. That was the first extreme. action sports extreme yeah. publication. Action and, Now. And they're the ones who probably coined the phrase action sports. Yeah. Because yeah. It was called Action Now, but we Hated it. The just skateboarders like, just were, like we were bummed. called extreme athletes. Dude, no, it was that. like this was skateboarder magazine, and it, then it turned into skateboarders action now. And then all of a sudden, there was BMX in there. There was surfing. Oh. There was what? But that, I mean, those were understandable. You know, almost linked to skateboarding. But it was like it, they covered. I, I'll never forget. This is one where I lost interest. Well, I mean, not lost interest, but I was like, all right, this isn't even skateboarding at all. They had some competition called body skimming. Did you see that article? Mm -hmm. Oh, boogie, was a boogie board. No, it was literally, they were digging a ditch in dirt, covering it with a thin layer of water, and then people would run and skim their bodies along. <laughs> Man, punch see how far? In the face. And That's they so did bad. an article on it. I was like, this is like some joke circus event. Yeah. And they put it in, and it was just like, and the, body skimming, Kona skate park contest. I was like, <laughs> dude, this sucks. Yeah, agreed. But that was the first time I got a photo and skateboarder was in action now. Or action now, not skateboarder, yeah. yeah. Man, you guys, I'm going to say this a lot today. You guys are old as fuck. <laughs> action now. I'm 50. What do you mean action now? Like, I know that this is an older generation right now going, how dare you not know action now, Jason? I, no one showed me yeah. one. But I, I, I remember, never saw I remember cover Lance, or anything. Lance and Neil calling it awful now. Oh, yeah, man. So it was, our bibs. It? Our bibs said action now, remember? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, for the gold cap. Yeah. Bibs when you were in contests. That's yeah. right. Yeah. You guys look like they were like, hey, they were like, like, Fixing shit on the road. Yeah. But no, they were in a contest. And the older dudes, the punk dudes, would would cover theirs in blood. Yeah. Which was at Dwayne cool. and, and yeah. Salvo. Dwayne and Salvo. Just, yeah. Blood. But yeah, we Where'd wore they get bibs. the blood from? We wore bibs. In case like, we, uh, what's your shop or? No, like, just them slamming, whatever. Like, yeah. We bled back yeah, then, Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of blood to go around. We bled. Fine. Yeah. Uh, Scrapes everywhere. If yeah. you're skating Upland, you're bleeding. Yeah. Right. I should have a scar from Upland, actually, where my knee pad came off. Um, in 1980, and it's still there. So every time I look down on my knee and I see that scar, that's from Upland. It was mm. rough. It was gnarly. It was so. That was the gnarliest pool I ever skated, yeah. and it was crazy because both pools had this like weird like shadow or dark thing where they try to fix the tranny. Remember what you're yeah. saying? It was a kink there. We right. didn't call them kinks, but you know, not to be mean, but yeah, it was kinked. Right. It was not good. And then the square. Had one too, all along across the wall. So it being super, you know, super kinked, big coping, a lot of vert, small tranny, rough surface. It was the gnarliest pull ever. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, uh, I think it was Gregor Rankin telling me, because I was like, man, I, you know, I, I want to skate up on. He's like, no, you don't. I'm like, yeah. what do you mean? And he's like, dude, you skate a vert ramp with three inches of vert. If you went there, you would die. <laughs> I'm like, you don't know. I could do it. And then he told me the story of Lester Kasai doing a 
eight foot Japan air on the face wall oh, yeah. and writing his whole body off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like apparently he was yeah. walking around the contest with one whole side of yeah. his body bandaged because it, dude, was, yeah. like, it was rough down right. there. And then it he was, explained to me, he's like, dude, we're talking like way sandpaper. more verd than, yeah. than transition. And yep. yeah, I was like, okay. I remember Jeff Phillips came to an up and contest and he, he mostly just skated ramps at that point. All right. And he's from Dallas. And then he just wrote on his shirt, I will try to survive Upland. That was the shirt he wore at the contest. And then he like fractured his wrist or something. Oh, he didn't He didn't survive yeah. Upland. He tried. Right. That could happen. <laughs> Tell me about Bones Brigade because you've been in all the eras of the Bones Brigade. I was there for one of them. What are the differences? I mean, obviously you got older, so you're like your interest is like maybe not as focused, but… First Bones Brigade. What are you trying to say, Jason? Second Bones Brigade. I'm, <laughs> th you're old as fuck. How about that? I'm just trying to get it in. Do I need to skate more. And then, no, I did. Stop doing that to me. And now this Bones Brigade. Like, yeah. is there? Are you? Because you're the. Are you in charge of the team now? Or? No, no, no. I, uh, no, I, I did uh, ha actually have that role for a quick second, but I did not like that role of team managing. All right. Yeah, it was bad. Uh, so I resorted back to a skateboarder so I could have like the respect of the skaters. Cause once you get into the team managing role of a company and you start protecting the interest of the, the company and the skaters, it, it's really touchy. You know, I'm trying to make George happy, but then I'm trying to make the skateboarders happy. And it's, I could just tell the way that they were looking at me and I wasn't getting the respect as a skateboarder, uh, you know? So I was like, you know what? I don't want that role. I don't want to be in that role. I just want to be like the dudes. I get it. If like you know, George and 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 Michael and all those people at Power were always very nice to me, and I consider them friends. But yeah. I also consider them my boss. Yeah. And there were certain things that I would totally tell you and not tell him. Yeah. And if you're now working for him and you're going to tell him, well, guess what? I'm not telling <laughs> you shit either. So I see how guys would do that. Yeah. I, I just, don't know if you've gotten in that position at all, being. Uh, I I have, but. But I was I was kind of just there for the cause, and and there wasn't really. It wasn't like there was some big budget behind, yeah. my decision making or anything where it was like protecting interests. It was just yeah. like, dude, we're we are flying by the seat of our pants here okay. at the birdhouse, and so I appreciate you guys doing it, and I'll give you money if we have it. But we're all sharing this hotel room tonight. That's oh, yeah. what's happening. Pretty laid back. Yeah, I mean, I had to. I've told you the story. I had yeah. to lay the hammer down a couple times. And that sucks. And he, he's right. Especially when you're trying to be in the mix skating. Right. But also, but it wasn't his company. It was my company. Right. So to be an intermediary like that as a team manager is way harder. Because you're trying to please the, the, yeah. the bosses or you're trying to please the skaters. I was the boss and I was just like, we got to say I got the story. corporate card and I'm paying for yeah. like the hotels and right. the food. And, and then they're giving you shit about what you charge. Yeah. On the corporate card. Oh, yeah. And so it's… Right. Like, you stinge us. We're like, fucking stinge this. And yeah. then your boss is p happy for you. But if they go, hey, how much did you spend at this restaurant? And we were like, he said sky's the limit. Stevie's the best. And now your boss is like, really? Sky's the limit? Do you Doesn't remember? Brad's Conklin. Let me… Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go, no, you go. You no. Go. Funny story about being on tour with Lance, Lance Conklin. Yeah. And I was the boss. And I'd give these guys per diem and stuff. And I remember getting close to the end of the week. And it's like… Lance Conklin comes up, comes up to me. He's like, dude, I, I, I'm hungry. And I'm like, dude, I gave you your money for your per diem. He's like, oh, I spent it. I go, what'd you spend it on? <laughs> He's all, oh, I bought these at Shell Toe Adidas. I go, well, you can go eat your Adidas. <laughs> I'm like, you spent your food money on shoes, bro? Yeah. I'm like, I'm not giving you any more money. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, well, you see, you were born to be a team manager. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you just watch him like mope around stuff? You just had to wait. <laughs> or, or, oh or, or, no, I meant. <laughs> Dude, be so I'm sure we fed him, but I mean, I'm just I saying, I was like, you know, I'm not giving you any so more money. He's taking the hard line still. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Eat he your shoes, hungry. motherfucker. Like, what? <laughs> oh, man, I'd be. Do you remember when Powell sent us all credit cards? Oh, yeah. What? So, Powell, like, it was the heyday of the Bones Brigade. Yeah. The first Bones Brigade. The yeah. second, I don't know, whatever. The one no, I it was, was the on. first. I'm okay with it. I was, <laughs> I'm B team and very yeah, proud and of it. They sent us all, uh, Steve, Tommy, Lance, Mike, and me, they sent us credit cards. Yeah. And we didn't, we were like 17, maybe yeah. 16. We didn't know how credit cards worked. We we're like, sick. I was well, they, in my twenty. I was in my twenties. So. They okay. gave you a credit <laughs> card for you to spend and not and you. I pay don't back really or... know what. It, like I guess it was for us to 
charge stuff when we were traveling, maybe. I bought a four track recorder with mine. So everyone, <laughs> everyone <laughs> runs. That has nothing to do with skateboarding dude. at all. No, Jason, dude, dude, I bought a, a Tascam four track recorder. Jason, with mine. everyone runs theirs to the limit. Everyone. <laughs> Oh, instantly. You instantly. Just all, you just yeah, all just like, like yes! we got credit cards. Yeah. And then they're like, you guys got to pay for that stuff. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I agree. You can't give people like us <laughs> a credit card without saying, hey, just so you know, you've got to pay it. If you just give me a credit it was card, a it, was a it has a skateboard team on it. I'm pretty sure that's free money. Not one of us was like, oh, yeah, that's how it works. Everyone was yeah, like, what yeah. do you mean? Yeah. We have to pay. Yeah, I agree. Well, why did you give us credit cards? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't so give me free I, money I, and then tell me I have to pay for it. <laughs> So I did the Lance Conklin thing with the with the recorder. He he bought the shoes. I bought the recorder. Eat your recorder. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I was stuff. No, there was this. <laughs> they just took the card away after that. Right. We didn't have a credit card. Yeah, anymore. it was one month. One we month. didn't have we no cards. They took They're them like, away. Give, your credit card. give that Stop back. Them up. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are too young. You don't even yeah, you don't even a, understand the responsibility. That was a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know. Did you pay it back or did they pay it back? We paid out of our royalties. Yeah. For sure. oh, okay. So you. Oh yeah. Yeah. You no, we, we paid it ten. We paid it tenfold. We, yeah. They were like, "Yeah, we're gonna stupid. take it Dude, out of your road." We paid it. We got a dollar aboard. They got plenty. Right. <laughs> how much? Sorry. A dollar. One dollar aboard. How much do they get from the board? I don't know. A lot. All the rest. <laughs> how much the board? You should, sorry, if I just. They were like thirty six to thirty eight dollars for a deck Retail? back in there. Yeah, back in the yeah. early eighties. Yeah, probably thirty six dollars, maybe. You got a dollar. Yeah. I mean, I get it. You're building the boards and you're doing all that stuff. But yeah, that does seem like a bit of an odd percentage. It, But at the same we time. Didn't know. We didn't know. But I mean, at our age, we were making six figures. It seemed like. Right. Sky's weird. the limit for that. Yeah. We I were balling it. harder than ever. And it right. was just like, this is amazing. And yeah. Why ask yeah. for more if you're so, already yeah. getting more than you thought you would ever yeah. get? Yeah. I got my first board in 1980 and I was making $300 a month from selling $300. $300 boards that month yeah. and the next month I made 500 to a point where I was starting to get into thousands and then to the point where the uh, Animal Chin came out uh, you know Tony had his board Lance McGill um, Tommy Rodney Tommy and by 1987 I had made $18,000 in one month wow one month off board royalties off board, of board royalties, royalties getting one dollar a board what? Could you imagine if we got two dollars aboard that month? Yeah. No, I wouldn't look at it like that. It would break my <laughs> heart. Imagine how much money we would have wasted then. I know, yeah. Because <laughs> we no, were not wait. saving so it. Speaking, I save mine. I mean, it's saving it to an extent. Yeah. Oh, okay, sure, but, you're answering my question. But yeah. speaking of making this money, what's yeah. the stupidest thing you've ever bought besides suspenders? That was not stupid. <laughs> Oh just, my I'm god. I'm making, I'm, just, I'm, I'm making a joke. <laughs> I'm the joke guy on the show. <laughs> Fucking wake up. I thought they were great, but I just yeah, what was the it dumbest thing? Very good. Oh, I know the dumbest thing. Okay, good. I do know the dumbest thing. What? Josoy talked me into buying leather pants in Italy. Yeah. In 1987. In Italy, too. In so Italy. they were like How much were they? They were like probably 600 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> 600 bucks for pants. No, I walked in like Josoy is all about like Shopping. Yep, we know. Right? We oh, yeah. So we, we go, had the conversation. We go to Italy and he's going in all these I'm going to all these leather stores. So I'm with Roscop and, and Lance and I'm going there and he's trying all these leather jackets and stuff. And I'm like, shoot, I gotta buy something. He's buying all his stuff. Yeah. I bought black leather pants. How many times did you wear them? One time. I knew it. <laughs> That's what happens with those things. But I was like, just so good- no, not that day. I wore them for like a Halloween costume or something. I never wore them out. Oh, you never wore no, them no. legitimately? No. Never wore them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that you I didn't have the balls looked to at them though every day and pondered it. <clears throat> nah, not today. No. It was just worth buying in the <laughs> store, not worth putting on. No, at the time, it was like a good idea because yeah. Josue's walking out with a bunch of bags with leather right. jackets and everything. I'm like, oh, I'm going to buy leather pants. Yeah, I've done that. I wore before. it for a Halloween costume and that's it. I bought a Gucci beret once. And then I realized like a week later that I looked like a fucking tool with it on. <laughs> and then I gave it to 187 to make knee pads out of it. Gucci Beret, that must have been expensive. Yeah, yeah. I was in, it was in uh, in the sn- Aspen. So it was like oh, extra yeah. expensive. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, me and we were hanging out, living that uh, DC ESPN. I was getting paid from ESPN and DC more than I was for ever skateboarding. Wow. So... And I was hanging out with all these other people that go to those stores and buy stuff like it's no big deal. And yeah. it was kind of a little bit like you and Christian where I was like, oh, you're, oh, well, then I'm going to, I can't afford that jacket, but 
I'll get this beret. Then I'll, then, I'll, then I'll be hanging out with you guys. Look at it. I got an asshole hat on too, you guys. And then I saw myself in the mirror and was like, ah, oh, man, I just bought a dog shit for no reason. But at that time, we were making over 200 grand a year. Yeah. So yeah. Spending, six, pants is spending $600 on leather pants was nothing. Yeah, it's pretty much. It was like, really. oh, whatever. We were making that much. And not well, me for what for the most part wasn't trying to plan for taxes. Ooh, I didn't know that story. Yeah. Well, no, I mean I did. My dad curbed okay. it, but there was a point where he's like, "You can't spend everything you make because you're getting 1099 income and you got to pay at least 30 percent taxes or right. yeah. more than like 40." And that was a gnarly thing. I think that's the, probably the worst thing that I've ever experienced. Well, I didn't experience it. I already had a brother that that knew all that kind of stuff. Okay. So he's like, you need to put some money away. But I heard this crazy story of uh, Ray Barbie um, making all these this money and their family spending it. And then tax time, tax time came and they were like bummed. Oh, like, wow. oh yeah. So the thing, I wish that Stacy and George had mentioned, hey, you're making all this money. Yep. You need to put this money away because tax guy is going to come and take some of it. Like yeah. I, we thought, this, this, is, all, basically, this yeah. is all ours. Like, yeah. I didn't know what taxes were. Man, I just realized my father really hooked me up. He went bankrupt like five or six times. And at one point, he put the company in my name. And then I went bankrupt, like through him. Yeah. And he would all, I would watch him suffer in torment from all this back tax drama. And he would always say to me, don't ever get a credit card. Ellis's mm. are not supposed to get credit cards. Right. If you get a credit card, you will ruin yourself. And I was like, okay, like duly noted. And also you look really bummed out about the whole, so I never, yeah. I, I didn't want to get involved in that because I knew that I'd get screwed. I don't know enough. Well, like in my family, I was the only one that's ever reached that level of making that much money. Right. So there was no such thing of like saving for, t like you, like you get money back, right? Your parents would say like, oh, look, I, I got this much money back on my taxes. Right. Like oh, tax refund, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, that's what you knew. Like, I'm like, where, the, am I going to get money back? <laughs> the beauty though of what we did. No, we're taking money from yeah. you. <laughs> and it was the 80s too. So there was pretty loose with yeah. with tax laws and stuff. But what we, my my sister was a, a CPA because she was making money. She was a back, back uh, sorry, backup singer for, Bunch of bands had a really successful successful career, and so Bolton. she did her own. Yeah, Michael Bolton and, and um, just to name a few, <laughs> really just one. Righteous Brothers, Bill Medley, and all that stuff. But but she she knew how to write stuff off because yeah. she was in entertainment, and so I would come to her with my stuff. You know, I was like, ha ha, and she's like, well, what's this? Music? Well, don't you skate to music? Yeah. I skate to music. Yeah. You write all the music off. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, how much is it? Well, that was the haircut I got in Hollywood. Well, aren't you a public figure? Don't nice. you need a haircut? And I was yeah. like, yeah. 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 So all that. Or like if I if I had bought leather pants, she would have been like, well, you got to go to this fancy event. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's futuristic. People yeah, I was really like that back yes, then. Yes, yeah. No. I found out that way later when people, you know, like I had a manager and they're like, you could write this. And I'm like, yeah, yeah can I? Eh, I don't yeah. know anything. I didn't know about the write-off stuff either. And like, they'd be like, well, you know, you can write off your travel. Well, I get my travel paid for. Okay, well, you can write off the hotels. That gets paid by the company too. Okay, that doesn't work. Um, your food. You can write off your food. Yeah, yeah. They pay for that. Yeah. No write-offs. <laughs> no write-offs. Pay a large sum of tax money. Yeah. That's the answer. I paid a lot. And I don't know if you ever run into this, but because our income is so fluctuated that I would always have to pay penalties because the ta tax guys always want you to pay what you're going to make. Yeah. I never knew what I was going to make. Yeah. So every tax year, I'd be like, why am I paying another penalty? Well, you made this much money. You're supposed to project that. I'm like, yeah, but I don't have a set schedule. I'm, I'm a royalty thing. Yeah. So for a skateboarder who makes royalties, the t taxes doesn't work. It doesn't work well. It works well for people who are solid, know what they're going to make. This is what you're spending. This is what you pay in taxes. So now I've learned this thing where I, I got to pay quarterly because right. projecting like this is what you're yeah. going to make. And then maybe you're going to get some money back. Right. It's like, and then, yeah, I got some money back. You got $167 back from your taxes. Yeah, but I paid you like over a hundred grand. Yeah. Yeah, that's not money Thank back. you for the $167. Yeah. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, like, a, that's an insult. Check. Apply it to next year. Yeah. <laughs> We're going out to dinner. Yeah. Olive Garden. Could you... When you and Christian were the people that did the highest airs when you were in high air contests, how often did you 
beat him and and what was it like? Like you said, it sounds like you were friends. You went shopping together and, and you were both like the shorter guys who <laughs> both went fucking. I always thought it was cheating. I was like, <laughs> the only reason they're going 10 foot is because they're short. Because look at it. Oh Magnuson can go 10 foot. He, Christian could go 10 foot and Cab can go 10 foot. You're cheating because you're Tony Hawk. You don't count. And now Alex nobody per- else. And now Alex Perelson. See, he cheating. Big. Cheating. <laughs> <laughs> but was there ever like a, a rivalry um, like of any serious nature or? Not really. I mean, there's always been like the friendly competition when you're skating with your buddies and you're like, oh, I'm going to go bigger than you. Or right. I'm going to do like, I'm going to bone my front end gnarly and you're right. bone the tail out. Or I'm going to stall this invert. Long. Oh, you stall that invert? I'm, I'm going to stall it longer. Okay, right. You know, so it was always that friendly competition of like, it was just a way of for us to push each other. Yeah. Um, you know what? When I did my highest air, is that Raging Waters? Raging Waters, uh, Christian was hurt, so we didn't actually get to battle there. Oh. He was only there watching it happen because he was hurt. Oh. But all the other uh, high air competitions that I was with in with him, with like the Vision one, um, he won them and he won it at ten foot. But at, you know, he didn't get to go against me at the one that I got eleven foot at. So right, so that would have been because. If he can do 10 and you do 11, it's like, well, then do you have that other foot? Because yeah. I've never seen it. Well, who knows? I mean, who knows? And then all of a sudden, uh, we see this uh, thing of Tony Magnuson going 12 foot. And right? Cedar Crest. Cedar Crest. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah, so he actually, Tony Magnuson actually beat that a couple years later uh, with 12 foot. So what an extra foot, whatever with that style. And his heels, were, the board was flapping because he was grabbing behind the foot, so the board was flapping off his board. Right, but I do remember he had a... a, 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 a I couldn't understand his pump because he would land low. Like you and Christian would land on the coping. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's how you get momentum. He would land like lower mm-hmm. and just keep going mm-hmm. a little bit higher. And I'm like, how is he doing that? It was pretty well, the, incredible. The higher thing, actually, one of the guys that was going higher than all of us was Lester, to be honest, in yeah. the in the mid 80s. Le- he was less consistent, but he he was so just as high Lester as high. Kasai in the mid eighties was killing it and it was going huge. And we'd go to the contest and be like, Oh my goodness, Lester is blasting higher than anybody. But because of, because of seeing this happen, every contest he's like, he's going to go third wall, blow up yeah. and fall. So right. it, he wasn't ever in our mind. Like, like good, good he's going to win for Lester backfired because he would get a good landing yep. and he would just try to go higher. He yep. was not going to tone it down. Yep. So if he got three good landings, <laughs> he's going to bail a 12 foot air. Yeah. Yep. That's what's going to happen. So he was like, never looked at it, like, okay, okay, he's ripping, but he ain't going to be in the top here right. because he's, he's going to fall off. All right. But, um, when it came to doing airs and, 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 and competition stuff. So we learned that the closer that we landed towards the coping, um, we could get a, a full pump yep. into the next wall. Yeah. So the only way that you could get close to the coping was to come out and push your tail out over the coping. Yeah, and then, and then at the in. second minute, suck it back Sketchy in into stuff. like, so it was crazy. Like if you think about it, when we're doing an air and we're coming in, we're already into the pump position. Yeah. And if you lock up, yeah. Yeah, it's you're way done. Worse. Yeah, done you're that. done. <laughs> so I told Tony I did that in the contest and the announcer gave me my ride again and the other guy that was going to beat me was like that's bullshit you can't do that and I'm like I'm not going to argue with him but it was yeah. one of those like one yeah. two and the second one I was like oh we're going to fly on the next <laughs> wall Kaboom! and I'm like oh I didn't know I didn't even know that was going to happen yeah. I was too busy thinking about the glory on the other side with face hit the ground yeah. no it was so yeah it it was gnarly. So, you know, sometimes we would clip the, the coping on the yeah. way in and I'm like, oh, that was a close one. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I think I may have hung up once and then I like never hung up again because I don't ever want that to happen again. Yeah. So I'm going to make sure that my, my wheels clear the coping or I'm just going to bail. Right. So a lot of times we'd be shooting photos. You know, a good way to get out of that is to kick your board away. Yeah. And then jump in. Yeah. But if you're if you're a photographer yeah. and guys were always shooting us with the fisheye lens oh, real close, right. a lot of guys had them. got gashes. Yeah, and I, I remember out, I took out a couple of them. Who'd you take out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
He's not going to mention names. Yeah. I have a good one. So we sh- <laughs> Good for you, Stevie. Glad you got I it. I have a good takeout, but it wasn't actually... A- okay, so it was Graham Britton was shooting a cover of me and Lance for Transworld. And we were at uh, the block um, in Orange County at the Van Skate Park. And I remember kicking my board out and hitting his camera. And I chopped his lens completely off his camera. Like this nice fisheye lens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And I was super bummed. I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry. But that was like, I was going to hang up. So I had to kick my board away and it just chopped the. I did that to Aaron Chang. Oh, you did? (laughs) And he wasn't a skate photographer. He was like a really well-renowned surf photographer. Oh, wow. It was kind of doing a favor of shooting photos of me. Whoops. Welcome to skateboard. Gotta pay to play, baby. No, I think. Transworld paid for his stuff, so it was just a write-off, and he just got a new lens anyway, so he right. was stoked. But yeah, um, a lot of guys would just get hit in the head, yeah. especially it, from man. my board, Christian's board. Whoever did high airs and kicked their board out to get out, yeah. they got you got to watch out. Yeah, I would probably I wear a helmet. stitches once. I just realized. You did? Yeah. Who? I think it was Ted Terramon. Was it? Yeah. Was he in NorCal? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Ted. Eh. Yeah. So it's now cool you story. see what I, I missed now the 360 burial of all things. Like so sad. Oh man. Missed the grab. And, just <laughs> and you so you see why some guys would just kind of reach their hand out with the fish eye. Yeah, yeah. You know to get the shot because they don't want their head right there. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then so guys would be like, "Oh, that's so lame. You're not even looking through the lens anymore." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I live to see another day. Yeah. Let me hit you in, in the head with a couple of skateboards and see if you still want to put your head down. Right. Because I feel like that changes your opinion immediately. You're like, wow, that really hurt. Steve, thank oh, you. Oh, man, we, we went long. Oh, okay. Man, I ain't done. Round whatever. two. <laughs> Actually, yeah, Jason, I have a really good yeah. really story, I bro. A, I was going to mention it, but next time, bro. It's we'll going to be we'll a big thing, you guys. Days. Okay. I'm just glad you didn't tell a story about me having a gum in, in your toes. Well, next time. On the next yeah. on the next one. Oh, okay. I yeah. was like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Gum. And also, thanks to you toes. guys yeah. for, uh, for donating yeah. and buying raffle tickets. And here, here. I love when yeah. Tony does the camera angle. Yeah. <laughs> out of focus. Wait, what's your name? Art. Alex. <laughs> Don't worry, Stevie will do it for you. <laughs> you should have told me. I would have donated something. Wow, there's a, a huge session going out. Oh, we got Bucky. We got Andy McDonald's. And Mitchie. People hate when I do this because they're like, we want to see the session. Yeah. That's for these guys to see. Okay. Mitchie's got a mustache now. He's a man. <laughs> well, I can describe everybody. <laughs> Bye.